Hi guys, my name is Hyojin. I'm originally from South Korea. I moved to New Zealand in 2014, which is about 10 years ago. Now I'm working as a senior software engineer at RUN. You already have a lot of good ability that you already built in your own country before you moved to New Zealand. Who knows, you might be the um, dream candidate that they were looking for. I actually applied for a working holiday visa for Ireland, but I was rejected. So um, New Zealand was actually my option number two. One day I visited Wellington while I was staying in Auckland with my working holiday visa. And then it was a really beautiful day in Wellington. The weather was amazing and I really liked the mountains and sea and the nature in Wellington. So I decided to move to Wellington permanently. So, um, as a Wellingtonian and who really loves Wellingtonian, I said there are three popular things from Wellington. One is coffee. Wellington coffee is really good. And the second is beer. And third is IT. Um, if you think about really big, large IT companies, they are actually, a lot of them are in Wellington, like Zero. Zero is one of the most successful IT companies that is both from Wellington. As soon as I decided to permanently move to New Zealand, I did a lot of research, how can I get a visa to live in New Zealand permanently? So I started to visit a lot of um, schools in Wellington, like Viteria and Weltech and UB, and I decided to go to UB because I. At that time, I wasn't sure whether I want to be a web designer or a web developer. But UB had a class called Creative Media, which was a level four class. And that level four class, it was a four month class and I was able to try web design, web development, animation and film making class for each month. So I took that level four class um, and then I realized I'm actually better and I really like web development class rather than web design. So after the class, I decided to take that level six web development class for a year. Because I didn't have any career regarding to design or web development, I chose the level four class and then I studied the level six class. But if you already have experience as a developer from overseas, I heard there is a master class, which is level nine at UB, that you can go straight. My English was just as good as to enter the get level six degree. So at the time when I was taking classes, there were a lot of things that I don't understand. But what I recommend is even though the learning curve is really high just try try new learning that new information in English I didn't stop learning all new materials in English which was very useful when I actually got a job because I know all the vocabularies and context and everything so you be introduced as the summer internship program called Summer of Tech, which is the biggest summer internship program that you can get in New Zealand for IT jobs. There were also a lot of times that company people visit our office and then talk about what they were doing and what sort of candidates that they were looking for. The people who, like us, who just graduated and I got my first internship through Summer of Tech. After my internship, they offered me a permanent job. So that's how I started my IT career. So when I was a student at UB, I worked 20 hours a week. I was working at a cafe called Holy Bagels and Pizza, which was really good because working 20 hours a week gave me enough money that I can live in New Zealand. But also it was a great opportunity to practice learning English. And it was actually really easy to get a part-time job. I remember I got my job maybe in like a week. I was just like throwing my CVs, like handing off my CVs to any cafes or restaurants that I see. And then I was able to get a job within a week. When I was very close to graduate, I decided to, I really wanted to focus on job hunting because otherwise my visa will be expired and then I have to go back to South Korea. So I asked my parents, hey, could you please send me two month living cards because I think this is really, really one of the most important time in my life. I think this is going to really like live my lifestyle. And my parents kindly sent me two month living cards so I was able to focus on job hunting uh, making my portfolios and uh, looking for a job and do company research for the last two months. 
I knew that my visa will be expired after three months that I graduate. So what I did is, as soon as I started my web development class, I started to prepare for a job hunting process. So I remember my class was finishing in December or something, but then I started my um, job hunting process from April already. So I started to make portfolios, my business card, and I already prepared a lot of interviews and then did company research. And I started that uh, summer of tech program in October. And because that I did a lot of preparation, I had a confidence that I will be able to find a job before my visa expires. So first, networking was really important. Networking in New Zealand is really important. I went to every single summer of tech meetups. Just exposing yourself to the job market, it was really important because then they can notice you or you can get some extra information that you can't find on job description. Second is like, because we are an international students, we, the starting point is different from domestic students. So we gotta put extra effort to be stand out out of domestic students, spend a lot of time to write really good cover letter and CVs. And when I was at UB, my teacher also reviewed my CV and cover letters. So use your network at UB, use your support that you already got. And the third one is um, believe in yourself. English is only one of the factors that people consider when they are offering job to you. Other than English language, you already have a lot of good ability that you already built in your own country before you moved to New Zealand. Like your communication skills, very positive personalities or other experiences that you might have in your own country. These are all transferable skills. So even though English is not as fluent as native speakers, there are a lot of other really good virtues that you already got. So believe in yourself and give it a go. One of the interview questions that I was asked was the interviewer, he showed me the actual marketing website and he asked me how would you make this in mobile friendly version. So I explained to him hey if I'm going to make this a mobile friendly version and this is how I'm going to make it but what really stood me out was um, after I got home I actually coded all the thing that I explained to him and then I pushed to my github and I shared that link with the interviewer and interviewer really really liked it after I got my job I asked them like what was the competition rate is like and why they chose me and they said they really like my passion that I actually coded what I Set. So my current role is a senior software engineer. So back in the days when I got my first job, my role was mostly like web developer. So I was just responsible for making the marketing website and marketing blogs. But then I converted my role to a product developer, which means making the entire app that software company is selling for. So my current job is we are making a software that helps people to manage human resource. And that is a very front-end heavy job um, I would say my role is more like a full stack developer I'm working from home most of the time so this new company was actually one of my dream jobs that I was always looking for I only work four day a week uh, which gives me extra productivity when I'm actually getting to work and it's a fully remote job which is really good because I always want to spend my time in South Korea at least like two to three months a year so I can keep my relationship with my family and friends I can work from anywhere so early this year I was traveling Southeast Asia for three months and I was working while traveling which was really really good so a lot of some companies they don't even list their junior jobs on sick or trade me they just put it on their website so my recommendation is if you know the companies make your own list and then just check their companies and jobs and careers page often so to make sure if they have any like junior jobs or graduate jobs available there is another website called matchstick.com and matchstick.com they have all the list of um, startups from New Zealand and Australia and then you can find a couple of junior jobs from that website as well. The other thing is use LinkedIn, um, SICK, it's just use a lot of different mediums as much as possible. And also if you see anything like EOI, 
um, express of interest, then send your email and introduce yourself. If you are the candidate that they've been looking for, then they will get in touch with you. So building relationship is really important and they might get in touch with you in the next year or two. Who knows, you might be the um, dream candidate that they were looking for. So I think it's actually really important to talking about salary. In New Zealand, I would say the first couple of years will be considered as junior developer. And three to five years, sometimes three to seven years will be intermediate developer. And above that will be senior developer. After the senior developer, there are a lot of different job opportunities like staff engineers, engineering managers, or a CTO, anything like that. But I'm going to talk about the first three ones for now. So the junior developer average salary that I know is about like 60 to 80K for junior developer. And then like 70 to 90K for intermediate developer and 90K and above like 130, 150K will be for senior developer. And what I really recommend is ask salary range if you are wondering about it because salary is important and being paid for what you are offering to the company is really important. And if they don't talk about salary range during the job interview, that's a very a bad sign. In the future, I'd like to have my own startup. I think I learned a lot in the last eight years working in IT. And then also one of the really good thing in IT is to start a business, you don't need to have a lot of investment from the beginning because as long as you have a laptop, you can just build whatever you are imagining in your brain. You can just take it out and then you can always make it to an tangible outcome. So I want to start my own business one day, make a startup that has really positive impact to the industry and to the world and use my skills that I learned for something good to the world. Yeah, so there are actually a lot of IT opportunities in New Zealand. One of the biggest New Zealand economy used to be relying on agriculture, but like you can see, like climate changes and etc. etc. These are not actually sustainable anymore. So actually New Zealand government support hugely to grow their IT business in New Zealand. I also saw a lot of American companies having engineering office in New Zealand so they can cover different time zones from America and New Zealand time zone so there are a lot of opportunity as an IT developer in New Zealand AI maybe people who are interested in IT or just the people who is interested in technology already know that we have very developed AI systems recently so often people ask me hey now we have AI so does it mean this developer's job is going to be disappear in the next couple of years my answer is there will be more developer jobs there will be developers who's training the AI and who's maintaining the AI and also who's integrating AI to the platform is used for many other industries these days. I think that's why the developer job has such a great vision and I also believe in the future like how we learn English from school. I think people will start learn how to code, how to talk to AI, how to integrate AI in the future. So a lot of people ask me, could actually international student get a job in New Zealand in IT? And my answer is I can't guarantee every single international student could get a job because it was really depends on what sort of candidates the company was looking for at the time. At the moment, to be honest, the IT market is not really good, but all the other markets, the economy is generally really bad in New Zealand and also as well as other countries at the moment. So I can't really guarantee that every single person who graduate this degree will get a job, but there are still people get a job, there are still companies hiring graduate junior developers, and there are still some more of tech running this year as well. So what we can do is we can't change the market, but we can try put extra effort when you're looking for a job. Try spend more time to build your portfolio, make customized cover letter, try go out and networking people and then trying to get hear any information that you can get from those networking experience and who knows that there might be an opportunity for you as well. 
So after I got my IT job, a lot of people gave me a call and asked like, how can I get an IT job in New Zealand? How can I move to New Zealand? What are the options that they have? And I spent a lot of time calling with them, discussing the options with them. And I realized actually, if people don't really know anyone who's currently living in New Zealand, they can't really ask anybody about the, like, what is it like living in New Zealand? How can an international person get a job in New Zealand, etc. So I decided to open a YouTube channel to share my knowledge and share my experience to like people who are moving from overseas to New Zealand and especially looking for an IT job. So my channel is called New Zealand Hippie and that's how I was introduced to this UV International Students Manager and then had a chance to chat about it and then um, we decided to record this video for international students who's looking for information and who wants to hear stories stories about who actually graduated UB from overseas and then got a job in New Zealand. Having such a healthy lifestyle and actually building a community is, is a small community but building a community that is actually really meaningful and interactful. So I highly recommend living in New Zealand uh, if you are looking for a country that where you can start your new IT career.